So you guys might have seen the madness of yesterday. So today I'm anticipating trying to... Oh, hang on a minute, it's Mother's Day. Nads, 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 Nads. Here's your other present for Mother's Day. Come see, come sa, come see, come see, come sa. Come see, come sa, come see, come see, come sa. Come see, come sa, come see, come see, come sa. Come see, come sa, come see, come see, come sa. It might be flowers. It might be flowers, but it it's a might tree. not. It's Ma. a tree. It's a tree. It's more than a tree. It's more than a tree. It's a palm tree. I've always wanted a palm tree. You've always said I can't have one. It's more than one palm tree. Don't oh. cut the plant. Oh. 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 Oh my God, I always wanted a palm tree. Yeah, how, how will we make sure it doesn't die? I've got a palm tree. A what tree? Palm tree. Is this for outside though, yes. Mark? Looks, yes. looks like one of the in no, 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 no. Oh. I don't know what to say about that. How do you grow it? Oh, I've always wanted palm trees. Oh. This is how the great big ones oh, start. Oh, wow. It become enormous. Are you now, love it? Um, so here's the thing. Yeah. That bed that's now free, you can have one on the patio and you can put one in the middle of the garden and you'll have the biggest palm tree. Oh, I love eventually. it. I'm happy. Oh, can good. I have palm trees in the front though as well? That's yes. where I want palm oh, trees. Oh, yeah, the yeah, front. I just thought I'd start you with these. Yeah, can no, we no, get They more? grow very quickly. Can we get bamboo as well? Yeah, but they're going to keep growing and keep growing and keep love growing. Love them. Oh, I love that. Thank you. I really, that's a pain. Look, it's bursting than, out. Better than daffodils. It. It's bursting out. Of well, it. I like daffodils too. I know. Look, it's bursting out, guys. Yeah. So, Mum, how do you feel about being a mother? Oh, please. How do you feel? Um, um, I'm not, I wasn't a very good mother. I mean, I'm not, I, I can't say that. I'm talking about myself in the past tense. Don't ask me this now in front of the sun. Don't ask the leading question. Just say what are your thoughts on motherhood. <laughs> I led you at the garden path. Just asking you, how do you feel? I prefer the grandmotherness. Because yeah, I'm older. You were very young, weren't you? I was very young and I yeah. didn't know what to do with you when you when I got you back from the hospital. I remember throwing you on the couch and you nearly jumped you nearly bounced off. First I, first um, <laughs> thrown on. And I remember thinking, what am I supposed to do with this? Did you throw me? Well I sort of went like that. Okay, you threw and me. And then I forgot to take you home because oh, I left she you outside the shop. Yeah, she left you outside the corner shop. She well said. everybody always does that, don't they? No! Thanks, Kiki. We did in those days. And, um, did you? My mum left me outside the pub. Yeah, there you go. So it forgot me in the pub. Yeah, she forgot me in the pram. Did she? Yeah. Things were different. What, did like you? kids didn't matter? Well, of course they mattered, but people you just, just weren't. People just weren't as. Protective. You had more faith that everything would just be just fine. come back to you. Although, although I didn't, because I was scared to death about what you did, what one did next. But, um, so after you'd thrown me on the sofa and looked at me, what next? So... Because people want us to talk about our lives together. It'd be interesting to fill in the blanks. I, I start, We got a parrot idea. at the time. Oh. We, got, we got an African grey parrot. I'm curious how, what, what next happened in my life, Mum? We had a parrot. No, no, the only reason to say that is we had a gas heater and the gas heater... Um, uh, like your thing, a bit like a petrol... No, a petrol heater. Yeah. And it's... Um, it, they used to, what's the word? Leak? Yeah, go wrong and it and sent it out the fumes. Where's the dog? No, it, it, did, it didn't kill the it's parrot in the end. It's, um, it's but we all woke up with black, it. including you, the baby, Mom, round our nose. This? So it nearly killed us all. Did you hear that? Nope. A paraffin heater. A paraffin heater. A paraffin heater did what? Ran all night. Ran all night, and, and occasionally they could. Well, often they went wrong. They yeah. have and, used have and, and we woke up in the morning. My, um, Mark's father, me, and Mark, and the parrot, and all of us, including the parrot. This is the funny bit. Had got black round our nostrils where we'd been breathing in all this stuff all night. That could be why I'm asthmatic. And I knew that. I knew. I only knew about it when I went to switch the light on, and nothing happened. That's how bad I, how bad oh, it could have I could have died. died of we could have carbon all, monoxide. Exactly, exactly. But the parrot, well. But the parrot was fine. The parrot was fine in the end. Yeah. And you, obviously. See what I mean, guys? I you ask a simple parrot. question and uh, suddenly you realise that your brother was a parrot. Yeah, but he was a great parrot. He was a really nice 
parrot. Was he? <laughs> and you could teach them to talk, they told me, but, but this one wouldn't talk. What, what would he say? Oh, oh he wouldn't. Sense. Remember the parrot we bought when we were on holiday? Oh, the parrot that swore. Do you remember that, Kiki? Yeah, I was oh, really yeah. excited about opening it. Oh, and then Kiki. We it and it was like. We bought what this parrot yeah, in look at your boobies yeah, or something. So yeah. This was in Benidorm, wasn't it? Yeah. I was filming in Benidorm oh, we bought it. And we took it to a restaurant. You know how you buy a present, don't you, for yeah. your kids to keep them happy in the restaurant? Opened it up in this restaurant. Get like, your tits out! Get your tits no. And then even worse. I've never it seen... It no, no. And we Kiki's shut face, it up. We were putting Kiki's it face, innocence fell yeah, from her face. Yeah, because I was like, how old? I was like five so so Yes. Was so oh, don't, don't, oh. don't. <laughs> The guy was looking at us as we bought it. He was like, what, yeah. are you, "What are you doing?" Do you remember the parrot that swore in the restaurant in Benidorm? Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Get your tits out! It said. Yeah. Oh my god! Here's my dear mum and the dear mother of my dear girls. Got well, two of them. It's Mother's Day. We're in the park. We're going for a walk. Kiki's skateboarding, but I can't show you that because she wants to be able to do some tricks before she actually goes on camera. Ugh. Just put shit in my hair. Why did you just do that? I was just trying to get my hair out of my face and I just had that in my yeah, finger. Chi Chi's there, she's fine. Go on, Chi Chi. Good girl. Chi Chi. Yeah. So, 16 years of being a mum. Has it been everything you hoped it would be? Has it no. been? Because you always knew you wanted to be a mum, didn't you? No, it hasn't. In a good way or a bad no, way? Not really, no, in a bad way. Oh. Because I thought I'd be a much better mum. And I'm not saying this in a way as me, Wayne. I don't want you to say, oh, you are a good mum. I'm not want going to. I know you're not. To this. Yeah. But I'm just not oh. the mum that I thought I would be. Oh. And I think a lot of mums would say that because I had a rosy, idealised picture of how brilliant I was going to be and how perfect I was going to be. And I'm just, you know, it's just a massive struggle but to get it right all the time. And... I never have a single day where I don't feel guilty. At the moment, I'm having a bit of a good time because they both seem quite happy. Yeah. But with that is the fear of when they're not going to be happy. No, of course. And nothing could be constant. I just, I, I can never, I never really can focus on what I've done right with them. I only think about where I've let them down. But if I I'm honest. I mean, that's yeah. a totally honest answer. No, but I think that's... With no worries me in it at all. No, just but I think I would, I would say exactly the same, you know, and as a generic parent, I'd yeah. say the same with myself. But I do think I put... I can't remember in one of the messages I did for you on one of the Instagram somewhere. I said, I do think what makes you verging on a perfect mum, nothing oh. is perfect, hang on, is that you're constantly aware of where you're falling short and you're always striving to be better. So I do think that's a definition of being a good mum. In CBT, they say this thing that it, all things in life are on a scale and we put them on a scale of perfection or failure. Mm. And there's this lovely phrase that my dear CBT uh, therapist said, sometimes you need to just say to yourself, I'm good enough. Yeah, and the thing is, if any other mum had just said everything that I just said, I would <clears throat> leap to their defence to them and 100% mean it and say... Yeah, but the thing is, the fact that you don't think you're a good mum probably makes, makes you a, a very mum good mum. It means you're trying to be a better mum. Exactly. Mom. And I would 100% mean that to that mum, but yeah. to myself, I'm not very good at doing that. I just, I'm highly critical, highly, highly critical of the mum that I am. I think highly you're a great mum. Oh! I think Maddie. you're a great mum. Go and look after your daughter, she's just fallen. <laughs> Isn't that? Isn't that just. You know what that makes me want to do? What? Each little bird that's broken, each little cloud that sings. I'm going to pan off and mix. The Lord did it. Why are you laughing? I can't remember the words. What is it? Good things going on. All things bright and beautiful. All creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful. The We're trying to remember the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy, kingdom thy kingdom come, thy will be done. No, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. bread. 
and forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those those who trespass trespass against us. us. What comes after that? Uh, The God and the kingdom, the flaws and the flimdom, forever. The God is the glory. uh, (laughs) No, I get into Trump. I get get into Trumpton at that point. Boo, oh, boo, God. Barley McGrew, Cuthbert, Dibble and Grub. Oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Mark, you kingdom, didn't know the word. kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. I can smell spliff. Forgive us this day our daily, daily bread. We can all smell it. Forgive us this day our daily, daily bread. bread. When me and Dad were in New York, it was 4.20. You could smell it every day. It was. I remember I used to mumble it in the back of class, just in the back of assembly. And I just hoped that no one would ask me. I'd go, meh, 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 meh. I used to actually quite enjoy singing carol, uh, uh, singing, what are they called? Not carols. I used to quite enjoy singing hymns. What was the last uh, line? So forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And you just said you always wanted to go when towards evil. I was a evil. kid, I went to Christian school. I always wanted go, the temptation. temptation. So did I. I always yeah. just think, oh, I want to be tempted into evil. That's why we're together. Mm, dark. Did I tempt you into evilness? Dark. Do you feel temptation? Uh, yes. <laughs> What's that song? Da, 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 da. Temptation. Uh, da, 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 da. Temptation. Da, 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 da. Believe it. Temptation. You gotta better believe it. Temptation. Temptation. Ooh, temptation. Mom, who's that song Temptation by? Wasn't it? You better Sub- believe it. Temptation. Oh, da, 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 da. Temptation. I remember Bandel the song. Ballet. I don't know. Temptation. Temptation. Oh, I don't know. Temptation. 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 Could be so a disaster. God only knows what's going to happen. You sent them in to get marble cake. I think you love marble cake. I wanted to bake a cake for Mother's Day and you wouldn't let me. Oh, don't, because don't, you said don't, it was too much hard work. No, I was thinking of you. I was coming no, from I a kind place. But I'm more than happy to rush to Sainsbury's and get all... I just want you to have a really nice day. And I, I, I know I'm doing that thing where I'm over-worrying and I don't mean to. But I'm more than happy. I can go to Sainsbury's and get you all the ingredients. I'll do that. Do you want me to do that when I've dropped you off at home? It's not. It closes in an hour. No, but I don't want to make a cake now. Why don't you tell, give me give me a list of ingredients and I'll make a cake? No. Why? I don't want. I can't Why? bothered. I just what? want to get back and relax and watch telly. Well, shall and I? The paper. I don't want to do things and I don't want to tell you how to make a cake and I don't want to find a baking tray and line it for you and I don't want to tell you where the scales are <laughs> and I don't want to turn the oven on for you. You don't have to. <laughs> I'll, okay, I'll find a recipe and I'll make one. No, really, darling. I genuinely am looking forward to the marble cake. The cake is just going to. I promise you. If I really wanted a cake, I would say to you, make one. If I really wanted to make a cake, I would make one. I don't want to anymore. Okay. In a good way and totally just chilled out. Where are those Wait. glasses from? They're very nice. Primark, two quid. I really like them, yeah. I keep I seeing mean, them. two quid, girls. Should I get used? They've got really? brown ones. Two quid. Two quid. As are my fantastic reading glasses. Two quid. That sort of clobber must Madness. be making a dent in the side of luxury wear. I mean, I have wear. to say, on day one, this came off. Oh. But I got, I got one from another pair of glasses and put it on with some nail glue and it stayed on. Oh, well done. So if you're going to buy some from Primark, my advice would be immediately take these things off and put some nail glue or some super glue. Two pound. Take them off. And you know what's nice? They haven't even got those stupid things there oh, that yeah, always that fall always off. Come off. And so you can do that with your hair oh, and they don't so get nice. caught in your hair. Except when I do that, you tell me to do, not do that. Why do expensive sunglasses have those wobbly bits there? So you're supposed to be able to adjust them according to the crooked shape oh, of I your nose. Like I've annoyed. always ended up pushing them down and then they end up being so crooked that I look... Crooked. Isn't it weird how one always loses expensive sunglasses but never loses cheap ones? So true. Why is that? So true. I'm feeling really kind of excited because we're about to start filming Green Fingered Hell. And to, to commemorate and celebrate and get excited about it, what I'm going to do is. So now, is it really wrong to have one and a half Barocca? Yeah, you're only supposed to have one. Sorry, Why? Because that's what it says. Maggie, but no one observes a recommended units intake on alcohol. There's absolutely no point. Any extra vitamins you get that you don't need, you literally wee out. So just waste some money. Well, I, I wee them out anyway. And I like my Barocca in an extra long glass. Going in.
Look, lovely Nadia's made this lovely mixture to put in things. Whoa. What is it? What's in it? Tell us, talk us through it. Mayo, lettuce, pesto, chicken. Wow. Yum, yum. Red pepper for Kiki. No, red pepper for Maddie and cucumber. Do you like red pepper? That's good. Only red pepper. You do, do you? I don't like pepper at all. <laughs> so, what do you think of this idea that one of the Sunday papers has suggested that when you get to a certain age of like 80, 85, 90, or an age where, you know, you are perhaps unable to be looked after by your family, you're going to go into a care home and you're going to be effectively infantilised until the moment you die. But someone in one of the papers has suggested today, why not let 85 pluses just take drugs? Why not get to 85 and take MDMA? Well, as my attitude to alcohol changes as I get older and I realise that alcohol is just as much of a drug as anything else, and I certainly don't think there's anything wrong with older people having a as drink. much drink as they want, so why not anything else? I might take up smoking again at 85, who knows? Well, here's the thing. Here's a, little bit, here's a little example of it in the real world. So my nan, Nanny Thelma, at the age of 91, she died at 93, was prescribed citalopram, which is an antidepressant. It's an SSRI, I think it's called. It's one of the uh, antidepressants or anti-anxiety depressants that I was put on. And it works on the serotonin levels, not obviously not in the same way, because you don't get uh -huh. a high. No. But it, it massages and it monitors and it moderates the release and, and what have you of serotonin in the body. Um, now, MDMA was originally devised as a drug in California to help uh, couples in problems, going through problems in their relationships. Because it would induce empathy. I think, yeah, and I think ecstasy was, yeah, exactly. It was originally called empathy, the drug. So here's the thing. Presumably, there was a point at which there was a sort of legal idea of the drug ecstasy or MDMA, mm. which is supposed to make you feel happy. Dr. Professor Nutt, or Professor Nutt has also discovered that in recent reports, one of the key drugs, I think, within magic mushrooms are proving in early studies to help people at the end of their lives rationalise the concept of dying more comfortably. Because they're a little what, bit high. Specifically dying or rationalised Yeah, well, no, the idea that... It must that, be rationalised fear. It can't be Yeah, specific. no, that's what I mean, rationalised fear. They don't rationalise dying, but rationalised yeah. thoughts of dying. So you might what, not... Like, like, for example, Nanny Thelma, she didn't have a terminal diagnosis at the no. end of her life, but like Except she said... the fact that she was 90. Well, that's what she'd say. She'd say, I'm 92, Mark. I'm terminal. Well, we're all terminal. Precisely. So should there, could there, is there an argument for, if monitored, obviously, yeah. for drugs of a certain sort of... I don't know, drugs that take... I mean, for example, none of us quibble about the idea that when someone's in extreme pain or at the end of their life, they're pumped morphine. full of morphine. Well, uh, for, me, for me, this topic... I mean, I suppose what we're just talking about is li illegal drugs. Mm. So it's not possible to say that people at a certain age can have illegal drugs. No. Because illegal drugs are illegal. per se are illegal. So I suppose the answer has to be no. But what we have to question is, I think so many of the legal drugs mm. are just as damaging and maybe not as powerful mm. in soothing or creating happiness in a person as the, the, illegal, the, the drugs illegal drugs would be. Whereas what you could do is you could monitor, so, so say MDMA as an example, have a legally manufactured yeah. safe side of a high yeah. drug that's administered only to people over a certain age in order to make the end of their lives as happy but as no, bloody Larry. Because let's face it, Why we're not? keeping people alive longer than they want to be yeah. kept alive with. Most of us who know somebody in their 80s, mm. even the mid-70s, are probably on five or six different drugs. Statins, blood True. pressure, whatever. Keeping them alive. My mum is extremely rare in that mm. she's in her 80s and she doesn't take a single pill. Mm. That is rare these days. So why not? If we're going to keep people alive and a lot of people are unhappy there, why not make it a bit happier? Happy pills. Happy pills. Happy you, pills. Yeah. I used to have an album. Your, your nan's life changed so much when she was given the happy pills. When she had the satellite Made it so much more if better. I, she had such anxiety before then. If I knew I could have a whole heap of MDMA legally sanctioned, legally supplied, when I was in my late 80s, I'd be really looking forward to it. I'd be because then I wouldn't well, be no, dreading see, death. But then, the, then it becomes morally wrong. 
Why? So if people are looking forward to having loads of drugs when they're 80, there's something why is, wrong about it. Why? Them. I don't know. Why, why if it's legal? Why not? That means that everyone would have a different approach to life. It would well, flip it around. I think there's round. something in when people have... This is as far as I'm going. People are anxious and people are depressed. And lonely and they're in their fearful. older lives and they're lonely. Then why not? Mm. You know, maybe even prescribe a bottle of sherry a night. Yeah, but we often say that about old people. Why not just do you see, you're at the end of your life, have whatever you want? But then you've got to medicate everybody. Which, you don't, in don't a way, have to. It's people's choice. I mean, look choice. at the problem in America with the opiates. You know, there's so many people medicated now. Mm. Don't know. Interesting. But maybe it's only for people over a certain age. So what would you start End doing End of life in your management. 80s? God, shit, so, shit loads of ecstasy. Oh, I thought you were below. asking me. <laughs> <laughs> what, would you, what would you have in your 80s? I might start smoking fags again and drinking tequila. Well, I think I'd probably go for some kind of mental hallucinogen <laughs> that made me feel incredibly calm. Mushroom tea. Mushroom tea, illegal MDMA, something called empathy, something that just makes you feel happy and smiley and chilled. I mean, that would be quite nice. Well, I remember a friend of mine when her mum was diagnosed with cancer and she was asked, what, how will the end come? And they said to her, you will have your morphine and you will just keep on turning up and you will just... Have go into a nice place and you'll fade away and you'll sleep. That's drugged off to sleep, isn't it? Well, here's That's... the thing. So what we have a problem with as a society is deeply suspect. We're happy pumping someone full of essentially the same sort of drug as an illegal drug opium if they're passed out not having fun. So suddenly somewhere there's an ethical issue for us to say it's right to do if we could in any way perhaps be enjoying it. That's really weird and twisted. Fine to and pump yet, it into someone lying is, almost and yet dead. Drink is, is legal, and as we know, drink now. If it was, if alcohol was brought to us now, it would be an absolutely class A illegal yeah. drug because it's responsible for eight different kinds of cancers. Ethanol yeah. is is poison. Yeah, and it's only because we're used to it's it and it's because, been and it's yeah, traditionally it's been there that we all say, it. "Oh, but it's fine, but it's fine." Well, well there's actually, so many contradictions. Within so many the world contradictions. Of everything, isn't but it? don't you think it's odd? We're happy to pump essentially illegal, high, strong opiate drugs into people as long as they're already out of it but well, if no you... i don't think that's weird because what well, it's not if they're out of it it's people it's if people are in suffering or yeah in yeah but pain. yeah so why it's do we have really to do it only when suffering. people why do it only when people are in suffering because and otherwise pain you've got legal drug pushing well this is it but i'm saying if over a certain age you be you are by definition terminal over the age of 90. You so are what age def- would you give everyone? I would drugs? probably, I'd probably say everyone should be allowed to have whatever form of legally sourced drug they would like from the age of ninety onwards. Lot. I used to have an album. Ninety is fair enough. I there used aren't to. That many people, yeah. Because otherwise, it's going to cost a money fortune. Yeah, but pharmaceuticals will make loads of money. And also, uh, I used to have an album called American Pensioners on Ecstasy. It's such a great album cover with an old man on the front of his tits. <laughs> I'd be there. I'd like to be I'll there with be you. I'll be there. Oh. Why? Why? It's only, I mean, in a day, you wouldn't miss an hour. But right now, I keep looking. It's seven o'clock. It's, it's like, I feel like I've lost an hour. <laughs> it's because you're happy, moron. Well, yeah, but it feels like we've lost an hour. You have lost an hour. But I can't actually come to terms with that. Like. Where's but it gone? An going? hour. The days are short enough and now somebody's stolen an hour. <laughs> but it really feels... I mean, do you remember when you were a kid how long a day was? Do you remember how long an hour was? I don't understand where the hour is gone. It, if you can take an hour away, time is totally arbitrary. Exactly. Where is the hour? Where has the hour gone? Where is it? Oh my God, I'm going to drive myself mad. Where is the hour? Is it an hour? You can't just change the hour. It's 1849. No, it's not. It's 1857. I've got a suggestion. Let's both go upstairs and find an hour. What are you talking about? There's a chat up line. <laughs> oh, God. Let's go upstairs. You've gone back into your Bob the Builder mode. I know. <laughs> I know. I was thinking about chainsaws again for a minute. <laughs> Chain oil. I just want to know oil. who the hell's got my hour and I want it back. It is kind of off-putting, isn't it? Why, Where is it? It's not like you can... Why can't we demand it back? Now we know 
why it's so hard for your kid to learn the bloody time because it's a it's a con. It's an arbitrary it's nonsense. A con. So you'll be getting this vlog an hour later. Sorry. <laughs>